Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Bags of Podcast for Below Average Golfers by Two Below Average Golfers. My name is Owen Smith, as always, joined by Caleb Wallen. And Caleb, we have a special guest on today's episode. We have Jeff Cottrell from Top Golf. Jeff, how are we doing today? I'm doing, I'm doing great. I am absolutely another below average golfer. So there's three of us on this podcast together. There we go. So three, Welcome uh, to three, the club. <laughs> three, uh, three of us on the episode today. I know that we had uh, originally reached out to you via Twitter and you said it was the perfect, uh, perfect thing to sum up your golf game. So curious to, to learn all about that. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and kind of jump into it. Um, want to hear about kind of your background and and uh, how, how you found your place over there at Topgolf. Uh, yeah, I've grown up in the marketing world. I've worked at places like uh, Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, Starbucks, uh, Nike, Converse. Uh, I ran an advertising agency for a bit out of Austin. And um, I have been here at Topgolf just like, I think in a week, it'll be a year. Um, and I can honestly say, I, I, I can't remember ever being this happy, uh, ever being surrounded by this many amazing people and uh having so much fun it's so much fun <laughs> that's awesome yeah there's a i can i can understand why working at top golf I, I was telling kayla before the uh episode that you know doing all this kind of research and and everything prior to it made me want to go out to the the location just a couple miles from my house so i've got a gift card um i'm probably going to utilize that soon with with the wife so good um, it's good to hear yeah, yeah so uh, well, I, I, you talk about, you know, you've been in all these impressive places before, but really want to know, like, what led you to going and joining uh, Top Golf specifically? Um, it's kind of a crazy story. And if you'll bear with me for kind of a minute to, for, to have me tell it to you, I, I was uh, leading marketing for Coca-Cola in North America, which included all of our sponsorships and all of our athlete and entertainment relationships and all that stuff. And we had um, an opportunity to play East Lake with Jordan Speed, who was a Coke athlete. And I was invited to play by the person that handles golf for Coke. And I was like, look, man, I can't, I, I haven't played golf in 20 years. I like, I'm horrible. Um, I'm not going to play. And <laughs> no, no, you got to play. You got to play. No, I'm actually, I'm, I'm not going to play, but I'll, I'll come and I'll, I'll walk the course and, you know, I'll, I'll be there. Great. So I get there, we get to the first tee. Jordan's like, why aren't you playing? And I'm like, oh, I'm not, I'm really, really bad. He's like, Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm like, yeah, it kind of matters. Um, I'm really bad. And uh, you all day would be like, Oh, it's okay. But secretly you'd be like, man, this guy's really bad. And uh, cause I was at the time really bad. So um, I went through the whole round with him. We had a, we had a blast, you know, I gave him grief about, you know, his, uh, his, his, uh, um, endorsement deal with Under Armour. We had a joke about it because I'm ex Nike and Converse, and right. he, he's just the greatest guy in the world. First of all, so at the end of the round, he says to me, "Hey man, listen. Next time I see you, you better be playing golf." And I was like, "You know what, man? You're right." So the next weekend, I went to PJ Superstore in Roswell, Georgia, and got fitted for a set of clubs and bought a set of Callaway clubs, which you know. There, there, there's a tie in here, you know, to the story, but I started then um, thinking, where am I going to take golf lessons? I'm not in a country club. I don't belong to a country club. I don't know where to take golf lessons. I had been to top golf once a year before with my dad and my brother. They both hit golf balls. I drank beer. I didn't even hit golf balls then, but it <laughs> occurred to me, maybe top golf has lessons. So I called top golf midtown Atlanta and signed up for lessons. And I took lessons for a year and a half. And I went from literally like not being able to hold the club right and, and even make any contact with the ball to being able to hit it again. And um, it was incredible. So I experienced it as if like a non-golfer starting to learn golf again. It was an incredible experience. And then a year or so later, I got a call from Artie Stars, who's the CEO, said, you know, I'm going to Top Golf and, you know, all this. And would you be interested in joining us? And I was like, oh my God, my whole life has just gone completely full circle. And wow. th this was meant to be. So, um, so I joined uh, almost a year ago, a couple months after we, I started, we had a fundraiser with Jordan uh, in Dallas. And I walked up to him like, hey, remember me? And he was like, yeah, you're the Coke guy. And I'm like, yeah, I'm playing golf now. And guess where I work? And uh, super, awesome. like super fun. So that's, that's how I got here, man. I got here because I fell in love with the brand, like 
as a as a player, as a somebody trying to learn how to play golf. That's awesome. And I feel like there's a lot of people that um find golf through Top Golf, which clearly we'll we'll talk about. And I'll speak for both Caleb and I, our wives didn't care about golf before Top Golf. They didn't, they they could they could care less about the about the game. It was just something that Caleb and I would go do. Um, and sure enough, they're both out there. Caleb's wife recently beat him in a round. Um, and, and it all started because she started swinging the club out at Top Golf. So that's great. Um, that's what we'd love to hear. We'd love to hear that story. Absolutely. Um, the other thing too that you answered. So a couple episodes ago, we had a scenario where would you rather play the worst round of your life but play with a pro or play the best round of your life and play with, you know, your best friends or whatever. And it sounds like by not playing with Jordan Spieth, you would be going and would rather play uh would rather play with your your best friends and play the round of your life then well at the time i wouldn't have played with anybody <laughs> <laughs> i was That's i mean fair. i was that i was that bad i was embarrassed i didn't want to embarrass the game of golf I, I also along the way had a chance to play augusta and uh was like oh, i'm no i can't play so like oh. a, a, a person that works for me i said to him hey it's your lucky day like you're gonna play Augusta that the Monday after the masters. And he was like, well, what, why aren't you playing? And my dad still this day is like, I can't believe you turned it down, but I wasn't playing at the time. And I didn't want to show up. And honestly, I'd embarrass myself, but I can deal with that. I didn't want to embarrass the game. Like I didn't want <laughs> the caddies to be like, Oh my God, this guy's so bad. So when I say I'm bad at below average golfer, I mean it. <laughs> you mean it. <laughs> Owen would oh. go out and shoot a 200 at Augusta and still love every minute. Of right. It. No, so, I know. You know it's- <laughs> I, I know. But the guy that ended up playing loves, loves golf and I'll never forget it. And uh, he, he was working really hard and doing some great stuff. And it was like, uh, I felt like a really a thing that he'd always remember. And I, in fact, I ran into him in the airport this morning in Atlanta and he brought oh, it wow. up. Like I literally got off my plane coming here this morning and uh, ran right into him. And he's like, Oh my God, I still owe you for my Augusta round. And I was like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, I need That's to awesome. figure out how to how to work for you and hope that you get another <laughs> opportunity like that. So, um, but I'm sure you would probably take it up at this point. So I might so take it up now. I'm, I'm I've gotten uh, gotten better. I'm still not good, but I'm gotten a lot better. That's okay. Yeah. Um, so you know, one of the founding things for for us here over here at Below Average Golfers is we do want to reduce the the stigma of golf mm-hmm. and kind of the the country club stuffiness. Um, that is found with a lot of things and we try to try just try to eliminate that and we see top golf clearly as doing something um, like that as well so would love to kind of hear your perspective on, on what you all are doing over there to, to eliminate things like that and really grow the game of golf well so first of all golf is a great game it's a great sport it's a great game um, and I think sometimes it gets a bad rap for having a, a bad reputation I mean there are things about golf that need to change um, it has been uh, an exclusive. It hasn't been. Uh, in, it hasn't been. It hasn't been inclusive. Um, it hasn't been very diverse. And we're determined to bring the idea of more play to the world. And we want everybody, everybody, to be able to come into a Top Golf and not be intimidated. Um, swing a club. If you miss it, it's a heck of a practice swing. If you make contact and it rolls three feet, we celebrate it just like you got a hole in one. Because we just want you to have fun. We just want you to come and let go and enjoy yourself and have fun and play. Um, The world needs more play in it. Certainly after the stuff we've been through the last couple of years, the world needs more play in it. And we're determined to to do that. So we get up every day thinking about like, how do we bring more play to the world? How do we make the game more diverse, more accessible, more inclusive? And at the end of the day, if we do that, we will look back on our time here with with, uh, great pride that um, there's been a game that's been around for a long time um, that is ripe for change and change for the better for everybody. The more people that pick up a club and swing it and play golf and enjoy it, like the better, the better it is for everybody, everybody in the industry. So we love golf. We love the game of golf. Uh, It's in our name. Um, We're not in any way, shape or form competing with the game of golf. You know, we think about on course golf growing off course golf growing like there's a lot of people that are doing, you know, both things. And we, we represent a lot of fun, you know, off the course. Yeah. So you, you mentioned, um, you know, swinging in a club is obviously the most, most important thing at, at Top Golf, right? Like you, you have to use that before anything else at Top Golf. So 
we're we're fortunate enough where we get or we have a partnership with Callaway. So, and you guys also have the the partnership with Callaway. Would you be able to uh, expand on that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Callaway is a uh, uh, bought Top Golf, acquired Top Golf about a uh, little less than two years ago, about eighteen months, twenty months ago, something like that. Um, they're an incredible partner, um, just incredible. Chip Brewer, the CEO, um, really has an incredible vision for the idea of modern golf and the game of golf is changing and there's lots of interesting brands that are driving change in the game. And uh, Callaway is one of them. Callaway's always been an innovative leader, always uh, dedicated to innovation, to making the average golfer better. I mean, you know, they brought the big Bertha out years ago. I mean, man, I, I wasn't playing golf and I, I knew all about it. Like the, the, the idea of, of, of bringing innovation and making players better uh, combined with our uh, social aspect of the game, loud music, beer, you know, you don't have to play golf if you don't want to, but, but just bringing the game, you know, together in a modern way. It's, uh, it's exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah, it's cool because, like, one of my uh, coworkers has a, a Top Golf membership. And, you know, when I go with him, we're, we're able to get, like, the exclusive club or whatever. And, that you know, I play Callaway, so it's not, like, a big deal to me. But I know he doesn't. And, you know, he, he gets, you know, kind of excited when it's like, hey, these are, like, the, the tip top of the tip top over here yeah, uh, with the Callaway clubs. And, you know, I've, I've tried to talk him into it before. Like, hey, you know, you like these. Maybe you should get your own Callaway set and, you know, join the club. But um, it's always nice, you know playing with him because you get those extra perks which is awesome yeah it's great so one thing that we've d- discussed actually just on the the last episode is um course evolution and kind of just the, the evolution of the game and right now you guys have a ton of facilities that are you know more kind of that driving range entertainment um uh venue um, was curious to see, you know, there's the top tracer technology and a lot of these things out there. Ha- has there been thought or ideas of expanding beyond just the venues um, with, with kind of growing the game of golf there? Yeah, I mean, I think first, so we have three businesses. We have the venue business, we have our top tracer business, we have our WGT video game business. Okay. Um, WGT, huge, huge online golf game, um, loads of fun. Um, top tracer, incredible innovative technology that traces traces balls it's on the tour you see it on tv it's in our venues um, we're also uh selling that technology to driving ranges um to make the driving range to bring innovation and technology to the driving range again we're not in competition with driving ranges we're um we're, we're not we we want more people to hit more golf balls so if we can uh, in, enhance the experience in a, in a driving range we we, we think that's great Um, We did just open our first golf course, though, and it's part of our El Segundo, California. We just opened in Los Angeles for the first time. Um, We've been around for more than 20 years, and this is our first entry into L.A. We opened in Ontario. Huge opening, really, really huge opening. And then we opened in El Segundo. We opened adjacent to an old par three course called the Lakes that has been there forever. That had kind of fallen out of favor, hadn't been taken care of. So part of our development deal was we would revive and bring back to life the lakes course. We now have a 10 hole par three golf course that's adjacent to our El Segundo location. It's a incredible par three course, really nice course, really well done. Um, But it has a couple twists that if you're not a great golfer, uh, there's a couple things that we've done in there that make it a little bit easier for you. And and, and again, try to make the game a little bit more fun. So we're absolutely respecting golf. We want, you know, serious golfers come and play this thing, but you can also have some fun there too. That's awesome. Yeah. There's been clearly a growth of, of the being more accessible for everybody and, and more of that entertainment. We've seen it with kind of putt putt courses, stepping their game up. Um, I, I was talking about, I love the idea of uh, being on the tee box and being able to trace my own shot um, yep. off of that so I can find it. I, I'm a, I'm an avid slicer <laughs> of the golf ball. So um, the technology can at least point, point me in the right direction. And I, I was just envisioning the idea of there just being a top golf course where I, it is the top golf experience and you walk into it and um, you know, the, the ground is already there and the, the course is already laid out, but with that technology just takes it to, um, the next level. Um, so love to hear that there's already been, um, some, some concepts with that. 
Yep. Is that we've something... got the tracer, the top tracer technology is on the 10th hole. So okay. you hit, you get your trace, get sent to your phone. Like it's, it's all good. It's super fun. That's amazing. Is yeah. that something that is planning to kind of grow or is it, is it early on um, with something uh, like that? Um, I think it's early on. We're in this situation where in El Segundo, they had a golf course as part of the development area. And uh, we helped re, you know, bring that thing back to life. It's not going to be a core strategy of ours. We're not going to go off and open a bunch of a bunch of golf courses. There's a lot of really great golf courses already in place. Yeah. Um, our goal is to get people, you know, from our venues to a driving range to a golf course, you know, all that at some point. But um, if it happens again, if we find a, a city that has a old public course that needs help, and we're going to develop a venue at the same time, there may be there may be deals like that. But it's not. You're not going to see us do a bunch of them. Gotcha. Okay. Well, the venues are good enough for me. Like I said, yeah. I'm like already envisioning getting out to, to the Fisher's location here, here in Indy area, uh, and go play, go play soon. Um, the, the other thing, so Caleb and I, of course, being in Indiana, um, the thing that we love about top golf is that it is accessible 20, you know, not 24 seven, but throughout the entire year, um, and we're, we're creating a winter series, something that we're going to do some content, um, yeah. for, for our YouTube channel and podcast. So we wanted to brainstorm with you a little bit on what, what are some things, maybe some competitions or things that you've seen that you would encourage us to kind of challenge each other on out at your venue, um, by kind of, yeah, creating content for, for the below average golfer fan. Oh, I don't know that I have a specific content idea, but we like to think of ourselves as an outside activity with the comforts of inside, right? Because we have heaters, uh, we have food and beverage that get served at your bay while you're hitting. We have loads of games to play. We have uh, Angry Birds has uh, been a wildly popular uh, game for us. Um, and for people that don't really play golf, but they know Angry Birds, it's a, it's a way in. You can also play St. Andrews at um, our locations. You can play a full round at St. Andrews on our screens. Screens tell you where to aim on the, on the, uh, uh, on the field and you, wow. you, know, you can play that. So we have all kinds of different games that you could play that you could create tournaments around or create, create fun around for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't realize you could play, the, play St. Andrews, play the old course on there. Yep. Um, and then is Angry Birds new? I, I haven't been there in a, in a while, but uh, Angry Birds has been around for a couple of years, actually. Uh, okay. And it's been, like I said, it's been wildly successful. It is one of our top, most popular games that's played, um, particularly by families with kids. Um, it's just a fun, different way to think about, you know, uh, hitting a golf ball without having to concentrate on hitting a golf ball, right? Some of the games are like, oh, I got to hit that red target. Uh, you know, this is, oh, I got to hit it over in this area. So it'll knock down the things. So, you know, we make the birds angry, that kind of a thing. So That's awesome. it's uh, nice. super fun. Yeah. So, you know, with trying to be like the leading um, innovator in, in that kind of entertainment golf industry, um, you know, we're starting to see, at least around here, there's been a couple like putt putt places that have come in that have tried to like, you know, revamp, you know, that idea. Could you guys see yourselves like going to the green itself and getting like a, a putt putt type style? Or are you more, like longer range as far as like the, the driving range goes. I, I, I don't, we don't have any immediate plans to get into the putt putt business or the putting business. We do have a bunch of, of uh, small putting courses, small mini golf at a number of our venues um, that people play in some cases while they're waiting to get into their bay. Um, but yeah, we, we, we have a combination, but we don't have a concept uh, putting concept up our sleeve. We'll let others sort of, sort of work on that and we'll focus on on being you know who we are there you go um you also have the vr golf uh which caleb just got himself a, an oculus uh right. not too long ago so yeah. um I, I like seeing that you guys with the wgt game as well i've played that plenty on my iphone uh so I like seeing oh, yeah. you kind of expand in, into those as well and we'll definitely uh yeah do some do some content with with caleb doing the vr golf yeah, the um, VR golf's loads of fun, right? Super fun. Oh yeah. Uh, WGT is great, and we've got a little thing up our sleeve uh, that I can't talk about uh -oh. that um, <laughs> will be will be news in I don't know the next handful of months. That'll okay. be amazing. Um, nice. That we're super excited about. 
Okay. Well, we will uh, be keeping <laughs> our eyes out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now you got, you got my interest uh, with, with that one. So looking forward to next couple months and figuring out what that is. Um, outside of the golf, it is an entertainment venue. You can go out for birthday parties, things like that. Also, the food is ridiculously good. So I have to ask you specifically, what is your, what's your favorite item or go-to item when you visit a venue? Uh, there's the mac and cheese bites are pretty delicious. There Very are good. pretzel bites that are ridiculous with the beer cheese. So good. And then the donut holes. So like all yes. three of my favorites are like small bite, you know, bite-sized things. Our burgers are incredible as well. Like just incredible. And so is our flatbread pizza. Like I, I got nothing but good things to say about our food. It's been great. I get to go to the venues and, and, and test and try the food. And uh, it's, it's really good. Our food and beverage team does a terrific job of hiring good chefs and good kitchen staff and making really good food. Yep. And uh, the donut holes, I'll call those out specifically. So I had those once or twice before. And then I did see the, the TikTok that had went viral with the raspberry and chocolate. That was awesome. Um, and then I tried it out myself and I can confirm that is a great combination with the donut holes um, and, and love seeing that uh, people promoting that as well. That's awesome. Yeah, that was a surprise. Uh, a young, a young guy um, put, put a video up saying, yo, bro, yo, bro. And he's just like having fun. <laughs> and um, we then made a response video. His got a million, our response got 10 million, then his got more. Then we had like 600 people come into the venues and film their own version of the video and put it like, it's just, it was just incredible to watch. Like it was so fun to sort of watch happen. Yeah. Yeah. Speaks to the power of, of social media. And right. um, yeah, I was, I mean, there's tons of content that's being made um, out at Top Golf. I've seen people, you know, attempting to get into the, into the hole um, specifically on some of the flags. And that's always a, a challenge within itself and something that I'll, I'll try. I've gotten a hole in one on the course, but not necessarily at Top Golf, so that's that's Wait up next on on my list. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! You said you're <laughs> below average golfer. You sandbagging on me during the podcast? No, no. Oh, I got no. a I got a hole in one. You know, but you know, I might have a couple. I uh, have to throw oh, that man. out there. We just played like in an outing, and I played terribly, and I just I'm feeling down. So I have to remind myself that yes, I did get a hole in one. I have to remind you, there's a lot of luck in the game of golf, and there's a lot of luck specifically with a hole in one. Of course, you have to put a shot in a good position, but yeah. yes. Um, but I can't. Caleb, you got one too? Team. You have one too, Caleb? Nope. I am still that blind squirrel looking for that elusive hole in one nut. So me, me too, dude. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so, but speaking of hole in one, so I've, I don't, you maybe you can confirm this or not, but I've heard if you get a hole in one, you get like a special prize from that top golf. Is that correct? Uh, maybe. Uh, no, I mean, not, not right now, but maybe in the future. Okay. All right. That'd be a good idea. That'd be a good. <laughs> a idea. Great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Call, yeah. The Caleb prize, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We'll name yeah, it. You have to you. call it the below average golfers prize. Like definitely do that if you want. Right. So, right. Or call it your above average uh, golf moment. One of, one of our segments. But. Yeah. But we've talked a lot about, about, about that. We do. I mean, we do celebrate them. Um, if they get a hole in one, maybe we'll, that's what I've heard. Our, our playmakers in the venues will celebrate them, but in terms of a special prize or anything like that, um, uh, you know, not, not anything formal. Great. Um, well, I know that we talked a lot about Top Golf, um, but also I just want to hear you, you've been, you know, now working for Top Golf for a while. Uh, you started taking lessons, you got fit for some Callaway clubs. Do you have any above average golf moments yourself? since going through all of that, or has it still been a lot of below average golf for you? Uh, my above average golf moments have been all in our venues this past yeah. year, meeting all the people that work in our venues. Look, I, I, I lead marketing uh, at Top Golf, um, but our company and our brand is really run by the playmakers in our venues, the people who work in our venues. They're the ones that set the tone, they set the mood, they set the attitude, and they determine whether or not our players are going to have a good time or not. And overwhelmingly they have a good time. So it's really, um, those are my above average golf moments. Just yeah. seeing that. Yeah. I've, uh, um, I'm not going to call them out specifically, but I have connections to people that work in the venues. Uh, my neighbor is one of them and I'm not even going to throw that out there at all, but 
Um, I have a neighbor that works there and then uh, I have a cousin that, that works there as well. So um, I know you guys take great care uh, of your employees and it, it's, you know, w even visiting the venue, um, it's definitely noticed uh, of how you take care of them and uh, the the entertainment value and just the overall experience at Top Golf is amazing. Um, you've been great. I appreciate you jumping on the Below Average Golfers podcast. Any any last words for us before we go? No, I, I'm uh, honored to be asked. I appreciate it when you reached out on Twitter and I saw your Twitter feed. I was like, oh my god, that's me. Uh, <laughs> I'm a golfer, so I'll be a guest anytime you need me, awesome. and uh, I will always be one of you. I can tell you that. And and I do want you to know I appreciate stuff like this. I yeah. don't take this kind of stuff for granted and uh, I'm, I'm honored and I really appreciate it. So I thank the both of you for, for taking the time to do this with me today. Absolutely. Yeah, we thank thank you. you so much. And yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll be out to the Fisher's venue soon to, to film some, some content. So All excited right, for that. Some, and then I photos. am, as soon as that new thing that gets released that you're teasing us with, I'm hitting you back up on Twitter and we're, we're getting you back on here. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I can't say okay. anything yet. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank uh, yeah, thanks for, thank you for joining. Cool. Thanks guys.